Paul's back now with another edition of Stories of Service. Yeah, yesterday I told you about this new book, Ozark Ike, Memories of Fence Buster Gus Zerniel. Loads of great baseball stories in here. But also the story of Gus Zerniel's service in the Navy during World War II. Gus was the youngest of ten children growing up in Beaumont, Texas. His nephew, Billy, was only six months younger. Gus and Billy joined the Navy together. Billy was killed in the Pacific, and that harsh reality makes Gus all the more thankful for the life he's been able to enjoy on what he calls borrowed time. Yeah, I wanted to play ball from the time I was a young kid. And I just followed baseball, and I could hit a baseball. He could run, too. By the spring of 1942, Zerniel was a 6'1", 180-pound, 18-year-old center fielder batting leadoff as he began his professional career in the Georgia-Florida League. The United States had been attacked at Pearl Harbor and entered the war, but the draft age was still 21. But I had been informed that the uh, draft age had dropped to 18 right. when I was there, and so I knew that Uncle Sam was about to grab me. <laughs> And so when I went home after the season, I, I joined the Navy. That's how you see the Navy picture. Yes, the new book has a photo of Gus and his blues. The Navy got a look at his strapping build and trained him to be a loader for anti-aircraft guns, but his main duties were as a radioman, and it was in that capacity that he set out from San Francisco as part of a convoy ferrying supplies to the China-Burma-India Theater. You would listen for four hours to signals, mm -hmm. and uh, they would warn ships in certain areas to be alert of submarines and stuff like that. And only a couple of times did we get alerted. And uh, we got caught in the Indian Ocean. Japanese had a ship they called a Q-boat. It looked like a, like a cargo vessel, but they could drop the sides. And of course, they had big surface guns that could blow you right out of the water from over the horizon. And when we, we were going into Calcutta with a load of P-40s in crates. They knew the Q-boat had a speed advantage and the firepower to sink them, but the camouflage Japanese ship just kept circling and never approached. When he circles, we wondered why, why he didn't come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had no idea because we stayed on all day and all night, and the next day he was gone. The crew remained puzzled until docking at Calcutta when it was learned that long before they ever produced heroics in the skies over China, those disassembled P-40 Warhawks packed a pretty good punch inside the crates, too. And what saved our lives was that we had those crates, and they, they, they apparently they thought we were a counter Q-boat, <laughs> that we were trying to suck him in and blow him out of the water. Mm -hmm. And that's why he didn't come in. So Gus survived three years in the Navy, coming out an inch and a half taller and 50 pounds stronger. By 1949, he was in the big leagues. Dubbed Ozark Ike after a comic book slugger, Zerniel would launch 232 homers during the decade of the 50s, a total surpassed in the American League only by Yogi Berra and Mickey Mantle. He's been a big league all-star, a commercial pitch man, a Valley sportscaster, and a fervent ambassador for the game he loves. He chalks it all up as an answer to a prayer he prayed as a young sailor facing the daunting uncertainty of World War II. I said, Lord, if you'll get, th get me through this war situation, let me play 10 years in the big leagues and, and, and live to be 70, because my family at 70 all got old. And I, and I said, I'll, I'll worship you, I'll speak of you, I'll do whatever I can the rest of my life. Well, I got through the war, obviously. I played 11, a little over 11 years in the big leagues. And uh, I'm now 84, that's, uh, so I'm 14 years on borrowed time for that. So uh, that's kind of a story about that. Amen. <laughs> Amazing. What a great sense of humor, too. Oh, and there's so many more stories in here, like the real story about Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio and why Joe's been mad at Gus, well, was mad at Gus for so, so long. So go check out the book.